winning one Super Bowl hard enough? Three is pretty rare, as you know. Our next guest, though, has done just that as an executive under three of the most legendary names in the game of football. Michael Lombardi is the author of Football Done Right, setting the record straight on the coaches, players, and history of the game. He's here at Post 9. Uh, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. No Appreciate relation it, to Vince Scott. Lombardi. Let's no. just get that. Get all, no. You should just tell people. Well, Absolutely. you know, really, my last name's Smith, and I changed it when I was early, you know, so I look like a Smith, don't I? All right, so yeah. I mentioned three Super Bowls under three legends, Bill Walsh, Al Davis, mm -hmm. uh, and Belichick. Yeah. Um, that's pretty remarkable to work under I've, all three. I'm curious as to what you took away from, from those experiences. Well, I think all three of them had this incredible ability. You know how Steve Jobs describes focus as the ability to block out things that may be helpful but aren't helpful to the moment? And those three gentlemen all kept the main thing the main thing all the time and their focus was constantly and Belichick still is on what is most important. I mean the Eisenhower mantra you know the list the urgent and important that applies to all three and that's how they behaved and so they never really got distracted by other things that kind of set them off course and they were devoted to the game. Al Davis told me once, he said, you don't work in the NFL, you live in the NFL. And I think all three of those lived in the NFL. You're wearing the, the fruits of um, your labor and one of those Super Bowl wins, obviously, the one where the Patriots beat the Falcons yeah. after trailing 28-3. Um, that thing's like the size of an aircraft carrier. You, <laughs> what's the state of coaching in the league today? Does it measure up? Now, take Belichick out of it because he's still coaching, obviously. But, you know, you, you had some amazing coaches back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and we could we could go through the list. Parcells, Joe Gibbs, yeah. et cetera, Ditka, et cetera. We, we, we've subcontracted it a little bit into the sense that the job is so overwhelming. With the, the owners have hired coordinators to be head coaches, missing the element of leadership. I think it's one of the things that prevents the, the, the minority candidates to get ahead because we're not spending enough time on leadership. Back in the day, leadership was important. Parcells led. Gibbs was a leader. They also called plays, but they also led. And I think we need to spend more time developing that. Ex-players are good at understanding the craft, but leadership is a whole element that you have to spend time on. In my first book, Gridiron Genius, I spent a lot of time on that in terms of culture and why those three guys were able to win because they set the culture. What do you think uh, of the, the season as it's got underway here is the most interesting storyline from the perspective of somebody who's actually lived in the game for your yeah. whole life? Uh, taking Kelsey and Taylor Swift out of the equation. <laughs> no, no, you can keep it. <laughs> no, no uh, never I think there's parity. The I, I think there's parity. Burt Bell, the man who discovered the draft in 1946, talked about on any given Sunday. I yeah. think we learned it. I think every year it's so close. Like you can't, other than the Miami 70 to 30 win 30 20 win excuse me uh, there's really hasn't been a dominating team Philly played a good last night but they weren't as dominating as they were last year so I think parity rings true I don't, I don't think you could sit here and say in, in September this team's going to win the Super Bowl I think there's some potential teams and there's some teams you can eliminate but that's what makes the league so good that's what makes it so exciting because nobody really knows the outcome you yeah. know you think you know the outcome until the Cardinals upset the Cowboys what do you make of the look you 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 work for DraftKings in a sense as a podcast host and you own shares in the company as a result I think of that but what do you think of the proliferation of gambling uh, in, in the NFL both on the the, the way that the, the league has embraced it like never before <laughs> but also in the way that some players have been punished for gambling while at the same time the league has wrapped its arms around it. Well in 1975 here in New York City the NFL today started on CBS and Brett Musburger who actually works for the owns the company that I work for it's part of the DraftKings network called VEASAN he had Jimmy the Greek on and they quietly talked about the gambling aspect and I wrote about it in this new book about how back then it was something that they couldn't say the lines or any of that but they talked about who was going to win the game and that propelled the sport tremendously.